how if statements, while loops, and for loops are the same, and how they're different. We're going to do this with this code that I wrote. And this code doesn't flash any lights or anything. All it's going to do is it's going to print some words for us. And inside of this if statement, if we are in this scope, so if this if statement is true, we make it inside this scope, the word if is going to print to our serial monitor screen. When we're outside of the scope, the word outside will print to our screen. What we have here is I start off with x equaling 0. I have a condition here if x is less than 10. And then at the end of every single void loop, we just increment x. So it starts off at 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up, and it just keeps counting. So what we want to do is first we want to figure out what this if statement does. Now, you have to remember that the if statement only runs one time. The reason why it often looks like it runs more than once in some of the codes that we write is because we've put our if statement inside of a loop. And so this if statement runs one time if it's true, gets to the end of our loop, and because this is a loop, it cycles back around, it does this if statement again. So yes, this if statement can happen more than once, but it can only happen one time for every time that the loop runs as well. So we can try to predict what's going to happen. So you can pause the video really quick. See if you can think what's going to happen. What's going to print to the screen? What's the first word that's going to print? What's the second word? Try to think about maybe the first um, few of these, maybe up to the first 20, 25 of them. Um, and kind of see what order you think is going to have happen in there. All right, so if you thought about it for a second, let's just talk about this. The if statement is going to run because x is less than 10 when it first runs, right? Because x is 0. This is true. The word if is going to print. But then we're going to exit the if statement because it only runs one time. So then it will print the word outside. Then x is going to equal 1 and we cycle back around. This is true again. We're going to print the word if. Then we're going to print the word outside. And we're going to increment. We're going to do this 10 times. So it should say if outside, if outside, if outside, 10 times in a row. Then what's going to happen after that is this is no longer going to be true, which means it will not print if. It won't get into this scope. Instead, this scope gets skipped. And then the word outside will get printed. We'll increment again, and the word outside will get printed because, again, if x just keeps getting bigger, it's never going to get into here. So let's go ahead and run it really quick. All right. Now, I kept it this way on purpose. It went really, really quick. I saw some ifs at the beginning. Now I just see the word outside. We shouldn't just be like, well, it looks like it was probably close enough. Let's fix this a little bit. Let's put a delay in here. A lot of times when we print something, we can't really see what's happening. And so I want to put a delay in so I can see what's happening. Later, I can take that out when I know everything's working the way that I want. All right. That's a little bit better. There's also this button down here, auto scroll. If I unselect it, you can see that uh, it keeps going even though we're not. That means I can come back up and I can actually see stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it printed this ten times, and then after that, it printed outside over and over and over again. So that's kind of what we thought would happen. All right, so let's figure out what would happen if I just change my if to a while. So let's think about it. Go ahead and pause it. And with this code written the way that I have it here, try to think about what would happen. I'm going to upload the code. And I just get a ton of if statements. There's no delay. Things are going really quick. Uh, Try to figure out why it's running this way. If you have to pause the video for a second to think about it, go ahead. 
So what's happening is x starts at 0. That means this is true. And then we get into our while loop scope. And the only thing that our processor is doing in this while loop scope from our code is going to be this line of code here on line 12. It's just going to print the word if. At the end of each time of it printing if, it again has to check this condition to see if it's true. And it is going to be true, because what it does is it goes back in memory and it says, what does x equal? Well, in memory, x equals 0. And it's going to always equal 0, because I haven't changed it. On line 16 here, it's true that I do have an x++, plus plus, but we never get to line 16, because we're in this while loop just running line 12 over and over and over again. So with our while loops, we have to be a little specific. We not only need a way to get in, we need a way to get out. So all I'm going to do, I'm not even going to have to type anything here. I'm just going to put this into my while loop. I have a way to get in, right? x equals 0. That's what it's going to start out with. And I'm going to be changing x within my while loop now, which means that after this runs 10 times, it should get kicked out. And the word outside will run forever after that. So what's the difference between this and my if statement if this runs 10 times just like before? Well, I should get 10 ifs in a row printed without it alternating between the if and the outside. Remember, with the if statement, it would run this once, hop out, do this. Then it would come, hop in, hop out, hop in, hop out. This one's just going to do this one 10 times before it comes out of this at all. So let's upload. All right, and you'll see that the ifs printed really, really quick. That's, again, because inside of here there was no delay. The delay is outside of here. If I added a delay in here, the ifs would print more slowly. That's my while loop. That's not too bad. Um, but you saw that it just printed outside forever after that. What would happen if I changed this from being global to this being local? Oops, not a three. There we go. So think about it for a second. Again, just a small change. But what would be going on here? Pause the video if you need to. All right, so now each time through the loop, x begins at 0. So we're going to come in here. This is going to be true because x started off at 0. This is going to run 10 times. Then we're going to print the word outside once. We're going to delay a short amount of time. I'm going to even make this a little bit longer so that we can actually see that delay. Then we're going to come back up here, and we're going to reset this variable. We're going to make x and set it to 0, which means this is going to run 10 times. So what should print is the word if 10 times, then the word outside. We should then have a one second delay. And then it should print the word if 10 times and the word outside once with a one second delay. And it should just keep doing that forever. And there we go. All right, lastly, let's talk about a for loop. If I simply just change this word to for, and I upload the code, I get some weird information here. It says that it expected something, not sure what's going on. And the reason for this is the for loop needs to be more specific. We don't just have a condition in here. We have to put three things in here. Remember, we have to have our starting, our, we have to have our variable that we're using. and a lot of times we'll give that an initial value in there. And that goes first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do as little typing as possible here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take our value x. That's the thing that our condition is dependent on. And I'm going to drag this into our for loop. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put a space in to make it a little bit more readable. I also need not only my condition, but lastly, I need how is this going to change? How's my x going to change? Again, I already have that. It's just in here. But for a for loop, it needs to be on this line. So I'm just going to drag this up to here. 
Um, I'm going to move the semicolon to there. And I'm just going to add a space. So the only two things I added were actual spaces, which don't really change anything in the code. So I'm just moving some spaces around to make it a little bit more readable. <coughs> this for loop should run exactly like our last while. What it does is every single time it gets entered, x is going to start off at 0. It's going to increment by 1 every time through the scope. And then we're going to do this 10 times. We're going to hop out, print the word outside once, delay one second, and then we'll do it all over again. All right, so if a for loop is nothing more than a more organized while loop, why do we have both of them? Well, a lot of times with our while loops, we don't want to just have it run 10 times. What it'll do is it will actually be checking a sensor or something, something that we don't know what the value is going to be. We're not sure how many times it's going to run. Maybe it won't run at all. Maybe it'll run one time. Maybe it'll run a dozen times. Maybe it'll run a thousand times. Maybe it'll run a million times. I don't know. Um, in this case, this is when I know for certain exactly how many times do I need this to run. So that's just a quick kind of overview about the differences between them. For loops and while loops will run multiple times before leaving, or they have the potential to run multiple times before leaving, while an if statement can only run one time.